could you maybe just share with us in a nutshell here what steps God led you through to bring you out of the haze of the questions, so to speak, into the light of God's goodness and give you real hope in God again, even in a time of seemingly spiritual turmoil going on in your life? Yeah, I love looking back and just remembering the the storyline of how God brought me out of out of real darkness and and struggle and depression. Um, I would say first and foremost, the thing that he used was the prayers of my godly parents. Um, I did not know it at the time, but my parents were more aware of my struggle than I even was, and of course, they were very concerned, and my parents had talked to me a lot and tried to share a lot of the Word of God with me, but they also recognized that at some point, the Holy Spirit needed to do a great work in my heart. And so they started praying for me, and I don't know what prompted my dad this way, but he told my mom that he felt like they really needed to pray that God would bring a godly young man into my life. I was in grad school at the time, working on a master's degree in music, and my parents started praying every night that God would bring someone into my life, a godly young man, who would really encourage me in the things of the Lord. And it was only two weeks later that my now husband asked me out for the first time. Uh, his name was Nathan. He is Isaac's one of Isaac's older brothers, Nathan Crockett. And uh, Nathan and I did not know each other well at all at the time. We were mainly just acquaintances. And for whatever reason, Nathan was compelled. I mean, really, at the at the hand of God, he was compelled as, to ask me out as an answer to my parents' prayers. And Nathan had no idea where I was spiritually. On the outside, I looked like the perfect Christian girl, but I was struggling on the inside, and I hadn't told anybody about it really, um, and especially not Nathan, but um, I just started observing Nathan and his walk with God as we started to become friends and started to do things together. And that was the first inspiration that the Lord gave me is I just, I watched Nathan and his own walk with the Lord, and it was so inspiring to me, the relationship that that he had with God, the trust that he had in the Lord. And I remember thinking, if I could be like that, if I could be a Christian like him, I'm in. I want to do this, and I really want to have a relationship with the Lord. And um, after that, I started to grow a little bit in the Lord. And I eventually did share with Nathan the struggles that I was having. And he was a theology student at the time. So he was also very equipped to help me on a very, um, he was, he was able to share with me some real facts and apologetics and talk me through very specifically some of the doubts that I was struggling with, and that was a huge help. But it wasn't until a few years later that um, I really had a big turnaround, and it really came, God really used the story of creation, because I kind of came to a point where I, I felt like I had to really decide, okay, do I really believe that God is the creator of the world? And I was at the point where I just, I could not believe evolution. I could not believe that everything happened. And I've always loved creation. I've always loved nature. And so when I um, got to a point where I just said to the Lord, I, I believe that you're the creator and there's a lot about you that I feel confused about. And there's a lot about you that I, that I don't understand that that doesn't make sense to me, but no matter what, I believe that you are the creator of this world and the creator of me. And that's where it kind of started for me. Um, kind of the reboot of my faith and my sure. relationship with the Lord. 
Sure. You know, Abigail, we mentioned this before, but I want to reiterate it because we've got listeners who come and go throughout the course of the hour. Many people face this. And in fact, I think that most of us are familiar with the old hymn, Come Thou Fount. And in the third verse of that particular song, the writer says, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. And uh, it's interesting that later on in his life, the author of this song did wander away from the Lord. And so, you know, these things do happen. And I'm thankful, though, that God gave you the victory in what you went through. And I'm thankful, though, that God gave you the victory in what you went through. And you really kept it quiet for quite some time. But just a couple of years ago, you shared your testimony in front of a large group of college students. Can you tell us about that and how they responded to it, please? Yes. Well, that was an interesting situation. Um, there was someone else scheduled to speak at the university that we have. A, we have a daily chapel, and they were going to have a split chapel for girls and guys on a particular day. And the president's wife was supposed to speak for the chapel, and she got stranded they wasn't able to fly back in time. And so less than 24 hours before the chapel, um, I found out that I was going to be the substitute speaker. And so I, I decided that the thing that would be easiest to prepare for in that short amount of time would just to be to share some of the way that God had worked in my life and had really re-inspired my faith. And so I basically shared this story in a little bit more detail in that chapel session. And I had no idea if it would even connect with a single soul out there. I really didn't know what the response would be. And I was just really hoping that the whole chapel wouldn't be a complete flop. And the reality was that I ended up having quite a few girls reach out to me afterwards, and the response was overwhelming as girl after girl after girl called, texted, emailed, stopped by my office, and said, this is exactly where I am. What you're sharing, the questions that you were experiencing, the fear, the doubt, the confusion, that's exactly where I am. And I heard from so many group leaders that um, the girls were discussing in the dorms the things that I had shared with them. And I realized that that what I experienced was super common. And I think I was afraid to talk about it because at the time I felt like I was the only one. I felt like, what's wrong with me that I'm struggling with these doubts? How could I... How could I, a pastor's daughter, growing up in this environment, be having these kinds of questions and these kinds of doubts? And I realized after sharing my testimony with so many that this is an extremely common, um, I guess, situation for people to go through. And I found so many girls who were seeking help and seeking encouragement because they were in a similar place. Mm. Gary, as you hear this, and you've sure dealt with many people who either doubted their salvation or doubted you know, their faith. Before the break, do you have any verses or passages that you would suggest somebody look at if they're struggling with this issue? Well, you know, Isaac, this is a great testimony that Abigail is sharing with us, and I think it's touching the hearts of many of our listeners today. I just encourage people to read through the Psalms, because like she said, many people face this, and I wouldn't doubt that there are people today, right now, facing this and they've not told a soul they're struggling within and you know the psalmist david for instance and others struggled with this and they just ultimately turned to the lord god will bring a person through by his grace when they turn to him and maybe we can talk more about that as time goes on <laughs> 